Well, good afternoon, everybody. Kind of strange to have a, a an open week uh, in the middle of uh, November, um, but uh, we have that, and so uh, we're going to try to get some work done as best we can uh, with some of our younger guys, although we had a big COVID outbreak last week with our younger guys, so the numbers kind of keep going up in that respect. So uh, we're down, I think, upwards of 20 guys right now, uh, mostly in the young guys, and so we, we've got to be really – creative in what we do this week because uh, we have a few young guys that have already had it and uh, if they haven't had it they're probably either in quarantine or isolation so um, we'll practice uh, some Iowa State stuff with our older guys but we're gonna have to go against each other to do that because we don't have any scouts this week um, due to COVID so uh, it's just an interesting week of trying to get better with our young players of the kids that are still around uh, as well as keep moving the the team forward is is with respect to game planning some of Iowa State uh, just probably won't be out uh, at practice as long as we typically would just because of a, a lack of numbers but uh, uh, plenty of things to work on for us uh, in all three phases and uh, I was pleased uh, of our growth on Saturday uh, in the same respect disappointed because uh, um, we need to win those uh, close games and, and had opportunities and uh, um, we'll continue to push forward to try to find a way to win those games. Kels? Hey, Chris. I, I know it's probably impossible to um, expect Deuce to have like 200 yards every single game, but now that he has had two where he's been a little quieter, how much more do you guys have to, as a staff have to work to keep him disguised and keep the defense as guessing as where he is? Yeah. Um, we wish you could have 200 yards every game. Um, we probably have to do a better job uh, of finding creative, more creative ways um, to get him the football. I know we had some things designed for him, and I thought Oklahoma State did a really good job of taking those things away early. And I think uh, um, when that happens, we have to create some things on the run to say, okay, here's how they're here's how they're playing him. So we've we've got to move him to this spot or we've got to do something. And he's capable uh, mentally to, to, to do all that stuff. And so uh, we talked about it as a staff on Sunday. Of, uh, you know, he had a number of carries, uh, but we need to get him the ball in space uh, a little bit more. And so it's going to be a conscious effort for us to try to find different ways uh, to get him in space and hopefully get a mismatch. Now that you've had time to fully reflect on last game, um, what did you like best and still want to see a little bit more of at a will? Uh, I like the fact that uh, he ran the ball exceptionally well. Um, I like the fact that after the, the turnover that uh, resulted in a touchdown, uh, he came back and let us down for a touchdown scoring drive. So those things are, are positive because he continues to improve. Uh, but we, we have to take care of the football. And, uh, and he knows that. We, we cannot have... Uh, turnovers in, in how we're going to play games, uh, winning one possession games and tight ball games in the fourth quarter um, that uh, we have to do all we can to protect the football because it gives us the best opportunity to be successful. I also wanted to ask you about one play. I believe it was in the fourth quarter, uh, the long pass you guys had to Sammy Wheeler. It looked like you've maybe been setting up, setting up for that all game, running a lot of variations of it. Um, what, what, what all goes into that when you've got a play you think can hit and you gotta, you've got to show the defense that, you know, four or five times before it opens up. Well, we were able to run the football well, so we, it set up our bootleg game. And actually, uh, there was a play that we threw to Jax in the first half. I, I know I don't remember if it was first, second quarter in the first half, and Jax got pushed out of bounds that Sammy was wide open on that same play. And I think we kind of put it in our memory bank to say we, we need to go back to that. Uh, and we came back to it at the right time. And uh, we anticipated Sammy being open. He was – Oklahoma State, um, or excuse me, Iowa State did the same thing to Oklahoma State uh, in a game that they had uh, at Oklahoma State. And so it was a variation of that. And, and we were able to catch them on the over route and, and for a big play. But uh, um, yeah, I thought it was a good job. We probably could come back to it even a little bit more often. All right, interesting. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. John? Yeah, Chris, uh, being down a quarterback already, do you have to worry about how many times Will is running the ball in a game like that, or is it just, hey, we, we got to do what we got to do? We have to do what we have to do. Um, I thought Oklahoma State was really good of taking 
away our outside run game, some of our perimeter stretch run or jet run, whether it was uh, with Deuce or whether it was with Harry or a wide receiver, they were running really well sideline to sideline. Uh, but in doing that, I thought it left some, some pockets inside where the quarterback could fake it and, and run essentially in the A or B gap. And so um, we have to do that. So we have to, we're continuing to manufacture different ways to, to move the football offensively. And uh, I was really pleased with how we um, played up front. We're getting better up front, but uh, um, for us, it's got to be an 11 man offense. We can't just say it's a 10 man offense and the quarterback's not a part of it. He has to be a part of it uh, for us to be successful. It was when Skyler was playing. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at on that respect. And I do think that uh, uh, Nick Oss could give us that uh, ability to do that too. And so could Jaron Lewis. Do you anticipate just in recruiting Will that he'd be able to have that kind of success running the ball for you guys? Uh, not this early. <laughs> I still thought we'd be seeing number 10 out there uh, spinning it around this whole senior season. So um, we knew he was a good athlete. And I think he's, in fact, I know dating back to the, to the Texas Tech and TCU game, um, he's getting stronger. Um, and uh, you can tell that, that he's put on a little bit of weight, put on a little bit of strength uh, in, in probably in better shape. Um, and just that just takes time. And uh, I'm excited because he is a threat to run the football. It's also going to check too. Do you have an injury update on Sammy Wheeler who went out of the game? Yeah, Sammy uh, unfortunately uh, fractured his clavicle uh, on that long play, and so um, unfortunately his season's cut short again. I feel awful for him because uh, he's doing some really good things, and and uh, unfortunately for Sammy, he just hasn't been able to stay healthy, and it's an awful thing because. Uh, uh, he's playing well. We're already down Riley, and so uh, won't be a whole lot of tight ends out there this week. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. Yeah. Karen? Thanks, Ryan. Um, hey, Coach. Talking a little bit about these young players who right now are in quarantine, what can you do to get the message to them how important it is for everybody to kind of go that extra mile because you need them. You need them on the scout team. You need the young players. You don't need your team infected. You have a great team and you have big ambitions. And how do you get that message across to the younger group that seems to be carrying this? We just keep preaching it as much as we can, Karen. And it's not something that, that goes unsaid on a weekly, daily basis. Um, you know, whether it's our trainers, whether it's our strength and conditioning staff, whether it's us as coaches, in position meetings after a practice. And I remember saying it last week, even that guys, this is getting hotter and hotter. COVID's spiking everywhere. Our campus is as, as a bunch. Um, and uh, I think it's more of the kids in general, student athletes, students on campus, living in residence halls um, that are spiking so much because it's not knock on wood as much our kids that are living in apartments off campus uh, because those kids don't come to campus very much. They're just coming to the facility and back home. Um, but um, it, it's unfortunate that uh, it's uh, a lot of young people, um, freshmen, and my daughter's a freshman, so I'm petrified every day. I call on, I'm calling her to make sure that she is taking care of herself. Um, she hasn't had it, but uh, it's just kind of where we're at. And it's not just at Kansas State. Uh, you look across the landscape of, of colleges, it's just uh, we knew there would be a spike like this, and, and unfortunately, uh, it's, it's getting the best of us at K-State. One other question, and that is after the game, every player, and I think you even said, even though there was a disappointment in losing to Oklahoma State, the big thing that came out of it was we can play with these guys. They're ranked, and we can play with them. There, there seemed to be a new confidence, even though there was a loss. Do you sense that? Are you seeing that going into this break? Yeah, I, I think our guys know they belong, um, and we talk about that, but we have to finish. And we finished in a, in a Texas Tech game. We finished in a TCU game, and we finished in an Oklahoma game. Um, and um, we didn't get it done this week uh, against Oklahoma State in a game that, uh, in my opinion, we kind of let them off the hook. We, we had an opportunity to win and, and give Mike and his uh, crew credit. They, they found ways to win, and that's what good football teams do. And I believe we're a good football team that um, 
uh, in due time is going to come on the on the winning end of those type of games. But um, we didn't this week, and so we have to learn from it, and you can't dwell on it. That's the thing. I don't want guys walking around here on eggshells thinking, oh, boy, we didn't get a win and coaches are mad and stuff. Guys, we're getting better, uh, and, and you have to move forward. You can't dwell on things and, and, and take steps backwards. You have to continue to move forward. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thanks. Arnie. Arnie. Yeah, Karen talked a little bit about this, but um, with the COVID situation, I was wondering just going into the season, is there really was no template for how to handling, handle this as a coaching staff, but do you share notes maybe with other coaches or do you, or is it an evolving situation, how you, how you handle practices, games, everything? You know, yeah, you share some with some of your closest people in the profession, but I don't think there's a template or anybody's got the manual to say, this is how you do it. Um, and, and we knew this was going to be an unbelievable challenge. I, I don't think the outside, the outside world, unless you're in our facility every day, knows what, how hard this is and how difficult the time is uh, for uh, these 18 to 22 year olds and us as coaches to develop. I mean, we, we had a plan laid out. Um, uh, 10 days ago, 15 days ago that I had had with some of our staff and more support staff. And here's how we're going to attack this week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with these young players so that it could catapult us into here's what we need to spend the remaining scholarships <clears throat> in 2021. Here's what we need to look for from a walk-on standpoint, whatever it may be, because we need to get an evaluation on X amount of guys, and this is the last open week we have. Now that's thrown away. We, that template's gone because there's a lot of kids we need to get an evaluation on that are sitting in their dorms in isolation. And it's unfortunate, but it's also reality and it's also the new normal. Uh, and so we're going back to the drawing board and saying, okay, what can we do to get done this week so that we can still uh, prepare for Iowa State, but try to push the program forward for the kids that have had COVID that are young players, don't have to deal with the contact tracing and are still practicing there's a fine line for that. We don't have enough tight ends. We don't have enough defensive linemen. We don't have enough running backs. We don't have enough whatever uh, safety. So how do we construct a drill, a practice, something so we can get a great evaluation of these young kids? Derek. Hey, Coach. What, uh, you guys ran the ball particularly well, probably better than any other game so far this season. Was that the biggest leap forward you've seen from your offensive line in a particular game this season? Yeah, it, it was. Um, give Coach Riley uh, credit and give those players credit. Um, uh, they, uh, they won the line of scrimmage um, and, and did much better. Uh, we need to continue to improve. We, we can't just say, okay, it's there now. It just doesn't happen at any position. So we have to continue to improve and work on the things that we did struggle with, whether it was staying on some double teams or just falling off of a block late. And that's what happened on Will's fumble. We fell off a block late <clears throat> and defense lineman does a great job, gets off the block late and strips the ball from, from Will, uh, or, or we have a one-on-one -on -one tackle with Will and maybe it's a fourth and one and we have to make a decision uh, or we get a first down. Instead, we fall off of a block late and he strips the football. Give them credit. But we are continuing to try to get better every day. And that's where you know, our offensive line this week needs to continue to go against our defensive line because I think our defensive line is as good as there is in the Big 12. I really believe that collectively and they make our offensive line so much better. You did talk about the recruiting aspect. You touched on it a little bit in terms of you want to evaluate your guys so you can kind of determine the numbers a little bit better. Sign day is just a little over a month away. Does that heat up in this final month? And what do you kind of have left to do before then? Uh, it, it does heat up, but it's not like they're coming on campus and it's not like we're going out and seeing them. That's the difference. And, and you have an open date this late. We'd be all over the place uh, going to playoff games and visiting community colleges, whatever it may be. That, none of that stuff's happening. So uh, it's us continuing to stay on, on phones and texts with guys. But, uh, um, you know, it, it is. It's coming up fast, and, and we still have a lot of work to do. So uh, we're spending a lot of time with our staff evaluating maybe some, some players that now maybe finally have three high school games on film, some that have a full season on film, 
Um, it's unfortunate the the states that still aren't playing uh, because we don't really have an evaluation on those guys other than their junior film. One last quick thing: how how active do you foresee your guys in the transfer market in the off season? Uh, we'll probably evaluate that a little bit more in December. Um, we're never going to shut it down totally. I don't want to have. Um, a bunch because we're still a developmental program and trying to build this thing so that in, in the future we're, we're competitive year in and year out at, the, at a high level and I don't want to do a quick fix but in the same respect that was part of this week to see how far some of these kids were to say do we need to go get another player at X position or Y position. Thank you coach. You bet. We got two hands raised we'll do these quickly starting with uh, Adam Coach, with the player of Deuce Vaughn, who was not recruited as he should have been coming out of high school, did you just sense a chip on his shoulder from the first snap that he took and in practice that he wanted to show how good he was at a Big 12 level? Well, mentally, uh, he was so sharp during our early time with him as far as learning the playbook and, and spending the extra time. So that part of it I was excited about because the game was going to slow down for him from a mental standpoint, because he just gets the game and he, and he really studies the game. From a physical standpoint, um, you know, we saw him on film and really liked what we saw in high school and said this, this type of player can be a, a difference maker for us. And then as you went through the first few weeks of fall camp, uh, you saw him uh, making really good players on defense that are making a lot of plays for us right now, missing the open field or not be able to cover them or just get outrun or get juked. Uh, and so we're like, okay, great. You combine the fact of his physical skills, his mental makeup, as well as just, you know, the kid's got an unbelievable heart. Uh, he's a tough, tough runner, uh, and he loves the game. And sometimes we, we underestimate the value of somebody that just flat loves the game, and this kid really does. Last one here, Kellis. Uh, given the bad news on Sammy, I was going to ask, What's the update on Briley? Would you anticipate him being back for Iowa State? Uh, can't. It's too early to tell, Kellis. Maybe next week at this time we'll have a better idea. Um, you know, we didn't do anything yesterday. We gave the players off other than meetings, and I don't envision him practicing uh, these next couple of days. So we're probably uh, a minimum of a week away from really having a great update on him. And I guess, you know, worst case scenario, if you're down both him and Sammy, what, what would you do at tight end there? Maybe you could come and play. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, we, we, we we're struggling. We've got Connor and we've got Nick and we've got a bunch of fullbacks that we'd have to be able to, to move around a little bit. And so that's, uh, that's why there is a benefit to have an open week and, and you know, three young freshmen that we're really excited about that potentially could be that role. They're not going to be here either for the next two weeks. And so, um, and we're not a 10 personnel four wide team. So uh, we have to be pretty creative on offense and, um, and, and hope that uh, we get a chance to get Bradley back and we keep moving Connor in the right direction. We know Nick's a good player, um, but uh, it'll be time will tell what we'll end up doing there. I'll start beefing up just in case. you Appreciate need it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell Matt. <laughs> All right, coach. Thank you.